Good morning and welcome. Uh, welcome to Fritt Ord and to the launch of the report uh, The State of Artistic Freedom 2019 by Free Muse. My name is uh, Ingrid Salvesen. I, I work as a journalist and I have the honor of uh, leading you through uh, this morning's event. Um, we have uh, coffee, uh, we have each other, we have some very important matters to discuss. It's a great start to, uh, to the day. The only thing we don't have is sound. Um, but we do have the sound on the video recording, so we will be speaking into mics. Uh, it's not because we don't understand that uh, you don't hear it, uh, but the, the people watching the video will hear it much better if we do so. So please bear with us. Um, this uh, is a very important report that is being launched today, and we will have uh, a couple of remarks on the stage before we start a panel debate. And the first person to speak today is uh, Knut Olav Amos, who is uh, the executive director of the Fritt Ur Foundation, where we all are. Welcome up, Knut Olav. Dear uh, State Secretary, dear other friends, artistic freedom is under severe pressure in many countries. As today's report from Free Muse, uh, the state of artistic freedom uh, shows. But why is this particular freedom so, so important? Well, as all other citizens, uh, artists have their freedom of expression. And because they create art, they often use it in their works in ways that are especially open to interpretation. This also makes it very vulnerable to interventions, not least from institutions of formal power. And therefore, artistic freedom has a special need for protection, in particular when art has a critical attitude uh, towards uh, persons and institutions of power. And when societies grow more authoritarian, ambiguous and interpretable expressions are very exposed to attacks. Norwegian author Jens Bjørnebo was an eager student of authoritarian and totalitarian societies, not least under national socialism in the 1930s and 1940s. And Bjørnebo noticed the very thorough attempts to get rid of humor, satire, and the like in these times. And he once remarked, when the laughter is stopped, the madness begins. When the laughter is stopped, the madness begins. A few years ago, the Mohammed cartoon controversy caused some of the same mechanisms. Cartoons are not a marginal expression, as uh, one could think, but often one where a society's level of matureness can be measured. Lives were lost and violence erupted in countries without any artistic freedom of expression. This did not happen, for the most part, in countries with such freedoms well developed. <clears throat> And the Danish editor Fleming Rose, who printed the original cartoons in 2005 in Newlandsposten, remarked a few years ago something which mirrors Björnebo's perspective. When the words are banned, the violence starts. When words are banned, violence often starts. Today, attacks on artistic freedom of expression is not at all restricted to authoritarian regimes. They happen, as today's global report shows, often in democracies. Spain jailed the highest number of musicians, artists in 2018, and the United States has the biggest number of cases of harassment towards artists. The Fritur Foundation, which is hosting this event with Free Muse today, is working mostly in Norway, but also internationally, with a focus on countries and regions under severe pressure. For many years in Russia and Eastern Europe, in later years also in Central Europe, and for example Turkey. We are very proud to be able to support and co-fund international organizations like Free Muse. In 2012, in fact, we organized in the Opera House here in Oslo with Free Muse the first world conference on artistic freedom of expression. It was called All That Is Banned Is Desired. Many of the topics discussed there are more relevant than ever, as today's new global report will show us. In uh, just a few words about Fritt Ord, the Foundation's core task is to support and fund projects and initiatives that use the written word and other artistic expressions 
to enlighten and discuss important issues in society, from journalism to documentary films, from books to state productions, and many others. We fund around 1,000 to 1,200 projects every year, big and small, many of them provoking and controversial, others just bringing forward important perspectives and new knowledge. Norwegians live in a, in a privileged country when it comes to liberal freedoms of many kinds, and Norway is almost always number one in global indexes on press freedom and freedom of expression in general. In fact, we are the world's second happiest uh, people also. <laughs> But uh, there are problems in, uh, problems in heaven, too. Uh, the last months, and especially the last weeks, have shown us clearly that artistic expressions are vulnerable, as all the discussions and actions connected to the theatre production Ways of Seeing prove, a production which almost no one, unfortunately, has seen, but incredibly many people have said and meant things about. Very unwise interventions have taken place from both politicians, even the Prime Minister, and from Norwegian police. Last Saturday, a crowd gathered in front of the Norwegian Parliament to confirm the fundamental importance of artistic freedom of expression and to protest against the interventions I mentioned. One of the speakers uh, at the event, by the way, was the Norwegian government's Minister of Culture. <coughs> Time will show exactly who has learned exactly what, but, uh, <laughs> se <laughs> but seldom before has a work of art and the exercise of uh, artistic expression taught the whole country that the core of artistic freedom really is the freedom that lies in art's ways of seeing, seeing political, cultural and social issues. The State of Artistic Freedom 2019 report from Fremius documents the global situation of this vital topic, the violations of creative and artistic freedom of expression. There is indeed much to be concerned and worried about in the analysis of 673 cases in 80 countries. There are many negative conclusions to draw. But there is also one very positive. All the violations and attacks on artistic freedom show us the huge power of this fundamental freedom of expression. Thank you and welcome. Thank you, Knut Olav. The next person to speak is Marianne Hagen, our own State Secretary. Welcome. Thank you, and good morning to you all. UNESCO's goodwill ambassador, Norwegian-born, uh, Dia Khan, once said, arts and culture are expressions of our common humanity. Culture and arts have the power to build and shape societies, as the Norwegian coalition government points out in our policy platform. Artists make full use of the human capacity of creation, stir our imaginations, questions the world we live in, and sometimes rage against it. Silencing them, hiding their works from the public eye, and suppressing the diversity of human expressions diminishes the lives of us all. It makes society poorer. Therefore, we must continue to support all those who are risking their lives to safeguard freedom of artistic expression. Norway is a staunch supporter of human rights. We support the UN work in this field, including the work of UNESCO, the UN organization with culture in its mandate. This is why Norway is a strong partner of the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights and of the UN Special Rapporteur in the field of cultural rights. It is also why we support Free Muse and the very important work that you do. The Free Muse reports are invaluable, knowledge-based sources of statistics and other information of the status of artistic freedom. And as the 2019 Free Muse uh, report sadly documents in many parts of the world, artists and audiences face censorship and violations of the right of freedom of expression. Artists 
and audiences are at risk of being targeted, manipulated, or controlled by those in power or in search of power. Threats against freedom of artistic expression are also becoming a challenge in Europe. The pressure is not just coming from governments. It's also coming from groups or movements that want to silence artists for various reasons. Female artists and their families, as well as minorities, are particularly at risk. Last year, Free Muse launched a special report uh, entitled Creativity Wronged. It examines the way women's rights to artistic freedom are denied or marginalized. Discrimination and violations of rights on the basis of ideolo uh, ideologies or traditions cannot be justified. It's alarming that countries increasingly use anti-terrorism laws to silence artists. Creativity, critical thinking and participation are the three basic components in a free liberal society. Artists, writers and publishers have always been at the front line in the struggle for these values. We commend Free Muse and other organizations working in this field for their tireless efforts to ensure full recognition of cultural rights. You are human rights defenders. Norway's culture policy is based on freedom of expression and tolerance. A free and vibrant cultural sector and civil society are crucial for fostering an enlightened public, a public debate and creating a thriving democracy. The right of all people, without discrimination, men and women to have access to, participate in and contribute to cultural life is enshrined in the Article 27 of the Universal Human Rights Declaration. States have a legal obligation to respect human rights, protect against violations, and provide adequate resources and infrastructure for cultural and artistic expressions. We cannot take cultural rights for granted. Governments must show political commitment and seek partnerships with like-minded states through the UN system and with civil society organizations that work for artistic freedom and cultural rights. Defending cultural rights is one of the two priority areas in Norway's support for cultural sector abroad. I'm very pleased to announce that the Ministry of Foreign Affairs is increasing its funding to promote cultural rights and artistic freedom in 2019 with 20 million Norwegian kroner. The other priority is support to cultural heritage and safeguarding the World Heritage Sites. There is a clear connection between access to cultural heritage, identity, pride and basic human rights. There are many examples of what happens when people no longer have access to places of prayer and can no longer celebrate their traditions or speak their native language. World heritage sites in Africa are underrepresented on UNESCO's World Heritage List and they face many challenges. Natural World Heritage sites particularly face challenges, be it natural disasters or clashes of interest between commercial and conservation actors. The government is therefore increasing its support to capacity building in World um, Heritage Conservation in Africa with 30 million Norwegian kroner. To conclude, let me again underline the following. Cultural rights are an integral part of the universal, indivisible, inter interdependent human rights system. Cultural rights applies to everyone. We must be tireless in our efforts to protect artistic freedom of expression. Thank you so much. Thank you to Marianne Hagen. There will now be, whoops. <laughs>
Uh, a video message from uh, Karima Benun, who is the UN Special Rapporteur in the field of uh, cultural rights. Let's hope it works. Ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, greetings. My name is Karima Benun, and I am the United Nations Special Rapporteur in the field of cultural rights. I am sorry that I cannot be in Oslo for this important event, but I am very pleased to support Free News at the launch of the State of Artistic Freedom 2019 report. Today, March 26, 2019, is a very special day. Ten years ago, on March 26, 2009, the UN Human Rights Council established the UN Mandate on Cultural Rights. That is not the only relevant date to consider. Just over 70 years ago, in December 1948, the UN General Assembly adopted the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, Article 27 of which provided the first universal guarantees of cultural rights, including the right to enjoy the arts. The launch of the State of Artistic Freedom 2019 report is a great way to mark these important occasions because artistic expression is a core element of cultural rights. One of the positive developments I noted in my recent 10th anniversary report for the UN Human Rights Council is that artistic freedom is no longer marginalized within the field of freedom of expression, thanks to work by the Mandate and its civil society partners. Free Muse has played a critical role in this mainstreaming of artistic expression as a specific and central human rights issue. As a UN Special Rapporteur, I am charged with examining, monitoring, advising, and publicly reporting on human rights around the world, as well as taking up specific cases of alleged violations. The issues in my brief include the right to take part in cultural life, and specifically, freedom of artistic expression. The work of an organization such as Free Muse is vital to my efforts, because it is one of the few organizations systematically documenting violations of freedom of artistic expression globally. I value its in-depth understanding of these issues based on years of experience, as well as its commitment to universality of coverage and its reputation for accuracy. Free Muse's efforts, including reports like the one released today, expose concerns relating to the right to freedom of artistic expression and draw international attention to the pervasive and troubling culture of silencing artists that is all too common around the world in both the Global North and Global South. This report is an in-depth analysis of freedom of artistic expression globally and provides relevant, thorough, and timely information that aids us all in working toward an open and safe environment in which individuals can express themselves creatively and can do so freely. We have never needed that more. Embattled humanity, living in a world of extremisms of all kinds, a world where hate is increasingly being normalized and where the impulse to censor thrives. Embattled humanity desperately needs full implementation of its cultural rights and other universal human rights in 2019. The State of Artistic Freedom 2019 offers recommendations and calls on governments, UN agencies, national human rights institutions, and civil society to address the legislation that is used in some places to restrict artistic expression and encourages the adoption of legal measures consistent with international human rights standards. It is clear that the challenges facing individuals engaging in cultural and artistic expression are proliferating, so it is a timely moment to support this report. I also welcome Free Muse's initiative to continue widening the dialogue around cultural rights through the creation of an Artistic Freedom Defenders Network. In my view, it is vital that a global coalition of cultural rights defenders develops and functions at the international level. I appreciate the significant role that Free Muse, along with its partners in civil society and governments, will play in this regard. According to the State of Artistic Freedom 2019 report, in 2018, four artists were killed. This is unacceptable. 
we must remember them all. Many more artists are still at risk, subject to physical attacks, prosecution, imprisonment, fines, restricted mobility, and censorship. The statistics and additional information available in the State of Artistic Freedom 2019 report show that cultural rights and freedom of artistic expression are yet to be realized in many parts of the world. Urgent attention must be given to achieving this vital human rights goal. However, whilst the report reflects on the solemn year for freedom of artistic expression, it also highlights the potential for the global situation to improve, and we must also look at the positive aspects. In my recent report for the 10th anniversary of the mandate, I noted that we should be proud of our achievements around the world at strengthening and consolidating cultural rights. These were recognized in the statement of UN Secretary General Guterres to the Human Rights Council on February 25th. He emphasized that, quote, more people are speaking out about the indispensability of cultural rights for protecting the diversity of beliefs and practices on our planet, recognizing these rights as an essential tool for preserving diversity and our common heritage, unquote. Free News is among the critical civil society actors doing just that, and I thank them sincerely for their efforts. I welcome the report launched today and salute Free News, its supporters, its partners, and indeed all of you gathered today for your commitment to realizing cultural rights as a key part of universal human rights. Wola Shoyinka, the first African writer to win the Nobel Prize for Literature, took part in an event with me last fall during the General Assembly. He stressed the need for everyone to choose whether they stand, as he put it, on the side of principles which elevate humanity rather than degrade humanity. And he asserted that the rest of the century should be dedicated to enabling the realization of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. He was right. Indeed, 2019 is a critical moment for us all to recommit to making the vision of the Declaration's Article 27 and its promise of the equal right of all, all, to take part in cultural life and to enjoy the arts, a lived reality around the world. Supporting Free News and supporting its new report is one important way of doing just that. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Best wishes. We have uh, two more remarks to go before we unveil the report. Uh, first out is uh, Jon Peder Egnes, Director Amnesty International Norway. Yes, good morning everybody. Um, one part of going forth is that people have uh, very often said a few things that you were planning to say, so I will start with a joke. So my, uh, the hero of my adolescence, Jens Björnebo, will know if he can look down upon us that I'm not gone mad. Uh, it's a joke you might have heard, but it's a funny joke, I think, and unfortunately it is very, very true. It's a Turkish joke, and it also shows that some of the funniest jokes come out of societies that are oppressed and where people are oppressed. We're in a Turkish pri prison, and one of the prisoners is handing in his weekly list of books that he would like to request from the library. On that list, there is a book by a Turkish author. The guard goes off, comes back the next day with all the books except the one of the Turkish, by the Turkish author and says, unfortunately, the prison does not have that book, but we have the author. <laughs> <laughs> And that is, unfortunately, a, uh, a good illustration of, of the report uh, that is being published today. Um, and before I go on, I would like to thank uh, our colleagues, as I represent Amnesty International at Free Muse, for the work they do in general and for this, this report in particular. Amnesty's analysis of what is going on with freedom of expression in the world today is that the space is closing in, is shrinking, and is getting more and more, is, is being put more and more under pressure. 
In addition to that, it is moving closer to us. We live in societies where we have grown accustomed to um, living in societies where freedom of expression is respected and where we are allowed to express ourselves. But we see in general, but certainly in the, today's report, that the clampdown on freedom of expression in general and on artistic freedom of expression uh, specifically is moving closer. The, m the largest number of musicians prosecuted in the world in 2018 were prosecuted in Spain. <clears throat> this is incredibly worrying. Uh, also the fact that it is specifically targeting artistic freedom of expression. Because we need provocative expressions so our intellect and our emotions can soar and so our discussions are not only fed by politicians and journalists. We must, should also be worried about this report because without freedom, artists are not artists. They either go silent or they create propaganda for the powers that be. And this is a problem way beyond the freedom of the individual artist. This is a problem that attacks every single one of us and our freedom to think and act in a political or cultural way. And I would like to come back to this, and this has been said before, but I think it's so important that I will do it even though we have a representative of the government here. I have to warn you against being complacent. The battle for freedom of expression and freedom of artistic expression is never over. It, has, it is never won. And we have seen this in Norway recently because even Norwegian politicians and ministers knee-jerk reaction to a provocative piece of art was not to protect the freedom of expression, but to question its legitimacy. I am not saying that this is now taking us into a Turkish reality, but it tells us that this discussion must be kept warm. It is never over. We must do it over and over and over again. And those of us who believe in the widest possible framework for freedom of expression and freedom of artistic expression must never believe that this battle has been won once and for all. Thank you so much. Thank you to Jon Peder. Then it's time for Maria Arnquist, who is a program specialist at SIDA, the Swedish International Agency for Development. Almost, yes. Almost, the Swedish you... International Development Corporation. Almost. Yes. <laughs> Quite tricky word, so we used the SIDA, the brief abbreviation. Um, thank you so much, um, uh, and thank you Freemuse and Fritt Ord for allowing a few uh, minutes of reflection on this report. Um, um, the Swedish International Deve Development Corporation Agency, we uh, support uh, people's ability to uh, uh, increase their opportunities to alleviate from poverty and oppression. And um, within this field, we have a quite broad uh, approach towards poverty reduction, which includes support to democracy, human rights, and um, uh, the rule of law, for example. And that's uh, where our support to free muse comes in. And um, uh, freedom of expression is uh, high on the agenda and has been for years. And uh, we are very... Uh, uh, proud supporters of Free Muse, also of ICORN, of UNESCO, and other actors within this field. And it's been very interesting to follow the trends and to see um, to see the art artistic freedom becoming uh, becoming a field and be uh, and also being on the agenda as it is today. And I think this launch of this report uh, and especially also the um, the uh, 10th anniversary of the mandate um, 
provides a new platform to move on uh, in, in uh, working towards the freedom of uh, artistic expression. So, um, um, there is still a lot of lack of data in the field, and there are few actors monitoring this. Uh, we see in the world today the closing space, really, um, and uh, I think uh, it's ever so important to keep supporting this work. And uh, the Swedish government also has in its policy, um, as well as CEDA, uh, uh, will continue to support this, at least in the future we see now. So thank you very much, and I look forward to the debate. Uh, and congratulations to the report. Thank you.